Hey guys, I'm back. So today I'm going to be explaining the inner workings of a voltage regulator. So this would be the inner workings of like a 7812 or a 7805 or LDV33, like any of those common 12, 5 volt, 3.3 volt regulators. So here's the inside of a regulator. This is a simplified version, but you can see here's the input of the regulator. Here's the output of the regulator. The uh, ground terminal, you, you would normally have the uh, op amp hooked up you know, usually it's not standard to write the power connections on an op amp, but you would have, you know, ground and um, this connected to the input. So the supply of the op amp connected to the input. And all this is is a feedback loop. So you have a Darlington array of an NPN transistor. You have an op amp, a voltage reference, and that's it. So let's explain the way the circuit works. So you can see this reference here, right? This is what's called a band gap voltage reference. It's always going to be at a stable... Um, at a stable voltage. So in this case, your output voltage will be regulated to exactly match the reference voltage. Now, band gap voltage references, they'll always have the same voltage, and so your output, like, not like a battery where it'll drain, they'll always have a specific voltage, you just can't draw any current off it, and since the theoretically the input of an op amp has infinite um, resistance, that's fine. So let's explain the way this, way this works. The output, right, this is set up as a basic um, comparator, basically. So the output will go into the negative, and if it's um, higher than the input, if the output is higher than this reference, this, out, this um, output of the op amp here will turn off, and the Darlington array will turn off, basically. This is sort of oversimplified. That, that way, um, no voltage will go there'll be no uh, current or voltage going across this NPN here, so the output will start to drop. Then, when the um, output is lower than the reference, this will turn back on again, and the transistors will start conducting again, so in effect your output voltage will just go up and down across um, the reference. So if this is your reference here, exaggerated it would look like this, you know, up, down, up, down. Now, that's slightly oversimplifying that because this is an analog loop here meaning that this is neither on or off. The transistor is never fully saturated or off. The transistor is sort of analogly varied, like, you know, you can turn the transistor on so it has more or less resistance in it. That's what's happening, is the transistors are being turned on so there's more or less resistance to keep the output stable. So, in effect, the, the, um, it will actually be much smaller, the ripple, because it's analog, not fully on or fully off. So you may say, well, these look very simple to build because all it is is basically comparing the output voltage to a reference, seeing if it's higher or lower, and if it's higher, um, turning, basically attenuating the input, and if it's lower, letting the input pass all the way through because um, your input is higher than your output. It has to be because there's going to be, you know, both um, voltage drops of these two Darlington transistors are going to be present on the output, so that's where your voltage drop will come from. So, you say, well, this looks like a very uh, simple circuit. We can build it. And yes, we can. It's just the problem is, I don't have a band gap voltage reference. So, in older, very old gear, they'll actually use like a, um, sort of like a, a similar to a wet cell battery for a reference. And they can, they, they, I've seen them be stable over 50 years. But in my case, I'm just going to use my regular lab power supply as a reference. So, here is my voltage regulator. You see I've spread it out over a whole breadboard, but you can clearly see the two um, Darlington NPN transistors, the um, op amp, in this case I'm using an LM324 just because it's what I had, but you can use a single op amp, you don't need four, and an output filter cap. Now, the reference is going to be applied to these green probes, the input is going to be applied between ground and positive, and the output will be seen right here. Now keep in mind that in this circuit here, there's no cap, because this is only what's inside the IC. This cap is necessary, because for a normal voltage regulator, like, you know, one, like, say, this LM317 here, you would normally put a cap on the input and the output. But um, I forgot to do that when I built this, and the voltage would swing by half a volt. It would go up and down. I put this cap on and it immediately became stable. So keep in mind that you need to filter at least the output. I have not been filtering the input of this, but you probably should do that as well for stable regulation. 
Now clearly it is uneconomical to build a voltage regulator because you can buy a voltage regulator for um, less than all these parts combined, but it's still an interesting experiment. So remember, if you're going to build it, put filtering, and um, if you really needed to and you had a band gap voltage reference IC or something, you could use very large power transistors here and actually build a beefier regulator than one you could buy. That may be an application for uh, actually building one, but it's neat to see how they work. So I'm going to cut now to um, it all hooked up, and I'll show you. Everything connected up. I know it's a little bit messy before. I'm feeding in from my uh, lab power supply, 10 volts. Now, obviously, the input to this thing doesn't have to be regulated, because if it was regulated, that would defeat the purpose of a voltage regulator. So we can pretend that I'm feeding in an unregulated 10 volts. Um, again, same Darlington uh, pass transistors, same op amp, same filter cap. And um, I'm reading the, um, on my multimeters, I'm actually reading the voltage um, from the reference and the voltage, the actual voltage. So as you can see, my reference is here. This would have to be exact because the reference voltage will exactly match the output voltage. This power supply is, pretend this is my unregulated input. And these two multimeters right here are reading, this one's reading the actual output voltage, and this one is reading the, um, the reference voltage. So you can see how the reference voltage will follow the output voltage as um, I increase it. So increase the reference voltage to 3.48, 3.49, and you can see this one is 3.49. Increase it to 5.66, and this one is going to be 5. Not to mention before, to make this supply work, it does need a load. So I have a 330 ohm resistor connected over the output. This load is just to discharge the cap because these things need a minimum load so that the cap can discharge and the voltage doesn't stay higher. So as you can see, reference I have set up 2.55, and here I'm getting on the real output 2.54. So pretty accurate. I uh, swing it up to 4.31, and the output follows exactly. Swing it down to 0.55, and the output will be 0.54. Swing it way up to 5.36, and the output's 5.37. So you can see how this analog loop works. Um, is that um, the op amp will cause the transistors to basically track the reference. To simplify my uh, previous explanation, the transistor will just track the reference voltage and follow that. So it's taking a 10 volt input and switching it down to a uh, 4.39 output. So I'm going to remove the multimeter on the right from the reference and instead take it to the um, power supply rail so you can see the um, change in the voltage. And you can see the input is 9.37. Um, but since the reference got disconnected, it would help if I reconnected that. Okay, so you can see now that the real reference is connected and it's still point. 4.39, but the input is 9.39. So you can see the output is 4.39, but the input is 9.39, and so this is the um, transistors are basically going to dissipate all of that. So you can feel the heat on them, um, but it's very light, very light heat. But um, that's how it, a voltage regulator works, and that's building a simple one. Really, all you need is an unregulated input. A voltage reference, an op amp, two transistors, a resistor, and a cap. That's all you need. It's that simple.